pouring into young people, helping them to know that you are never a failure. When you fail, it's just an event. You can rise up from it. You can change your direction, but you, your mindset has to be on top form to say, I want to make a change. And then through that, I've met amazing men and women who've coached me how to speak, how to make fair, how to be bold, courageous. And ever since wow. they've poured into me, I've poured into others. So it's been, they poured into me like a glass, and they poured water in. Mm-hmm. And as I've been refreshed, I've poured into the young people and those that I've met. Wow, 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 amazing. And um, your work comes across as quite challenging. So far in your career, what difficulties have you had to face and what steps have you taken to overcome them? Oh, it is very challenging. Um, I work with children who the state or the government would say have no hope. So children who are close to being excluded, children who have been... They've got their final chance to, to stay in school, children with special needs, children who are not doing very well in school. And they would just give me these classes, and through creative methods, I would have to sometimes take risks and do things that are not on the curriculum. Um, sometimes I've had to leave workplaces because they've, they've said, you know, this, you can't do this. And I'm, I've said, I'm here for children. I'm not here for an institution. I'm here to make these children learn. So as I've left, um, I've gone into other places where they've been very welcoming and they've allowed me to just design new curriculums, new things using film, music, drama sometimes, to aid these children to learn and to develop and stay in school and succeed. So um, that's been some of my challenges. And Break Out the Box came out of that because I found that many people needed to overcome challenges. And if I stayed in a... Um, school system, I wouldn't be able to impact many people and show the government what it is that can be done. So entrepreneurship was my way to break out, to bring new methods, unconventional ways and creative methods to youth, young people and entrepreneurs. Wow. Awesome. And I hear you do workshops for industries, schools and other businesses. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. Um, Exosa Consultant is a social enterprise, so it really works on helping the person affect their community, not just making money, but where does the money go, and where does the money go back into the community. So it's impacting women, young adults, startup businesses, normally under three years old, because they need a lot more finances and they're more prone to um, not um, rise up. Um, my key also is to build up leaders. So whether they're an entrepreneur, they're a youth, they're a young person, through training, coaching, and mentoring, is to help that person to understand that they're a leader. So whatever they do impacts others. So it works on marketing to promote themselves, increase their um, exposure, youth and young people, for them to understand that younger people are looking out for them and they're the next generation. And training also to make people walk in excellence because when you work in excellence the world will pay you for it and Break Out the Box also is is, um, a training form of working on relationships entrepreneurship attitudes and leadership and I've also got a dimension of media whereby you being a voice to help people wherever they are to basically break out of their comfort zone fear and excuses because sometimes we're too comfortable with who we are and we need someone to help us to get to that next level. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And and through your work, do you have any plans to open such a project for Sierra Leonean youth in Sierra Leone or even where you are in the UK? Yes. Well, I'm actually um, working on a few training programs around leadership, um, targeting young women and young men. Um, and I'm also due in Ghana and Nigeria this year. I've been invited to speak to the youth and the young people. So through Facebook and social media, they've been looking at what I'm doing and saying, when am I coming over? Um, so I'm hoping to see how that works out and then come to Sierra Leone. But I'm, I'm looking for contacts, people to work in partnership with and basically help make a change. So if there's anybody out there that's willing to work alongside me, 
I'm open and willing to come down and do that because our young people really need it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Edwina. It was nice having this chat with you, and we'll, we'll help to promote this project that we are working on, and hopefully you'll visit Sierra Leone very soon. Definitely. Ah, either way. I'm very, very, I'm very, very, very <laughs> Okay, we, we, we will call you. You will come. We all go meet up there. Thank you mm-hmm. very much, Miss Edwina. It was nice. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. I'm on it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that our visitors would listen to this song carefully because it's true. They're trying their best to stop our progress with bad propaganda. I mean the foreign press. Bad things are blown out proportion and spread all around. But the good things of the island they will never mention. Like our scholars have sit and passed every test. There's nothing about that in the foreign press. You know our music is rated amongst the best. There's nothing about that in the foreign press. But if a man steal a mango or breeze blow up a woman dress, bet your life. Good day, listeners. Um, once again, welcome to the weekly discussion of Voices from the Diaspora Radio Network. Our topic for discussion this week is um, about the media in Sierra Leone. And that is the Sierra Leone media post war. What are the challenges? Let me repeat that again. The media in post war Sierra Leone, what are the challenges? Gathered around the panel from different angles of the globe are uh, Mr. Uma Ufofana, who needs, uh, well, we don't need to really introduce this guy. He's been around the block and um, he was president of the Private College Students Union. He graduated and then went straight into journalism as he used to say, to help fight the cause of the people. He became the BBC correspondent, as well as editor, owner, and proprietor of, uh, manager editor of the political newspaper. Recently, he was the president of the Sheridan Institution of Journalists until he handed over to Mr. Kelvin Ruiz about a couple of weeks ago. Another panelist is Mr. Mohamed Boy Jalo Jaboria, who is a trade unionist. He is also a journalist, freelance, as well as an established journalist. He is a teacher, screen play writer, and development consultant. He lives in Norway and is a councillor in the Lindas, otherwise called Lindos municipality a position he will serve till 2015. Next to Mr. Boy Jalo Jamboria is Mr. Max Jimmy, who is from London. He served in the print media at the time when the war was at its bitterest, and um, is presently a teacher in the United Kingdom. We are expecting Mrs. Josephine Kamara Gombu from Nigeria, who was a stringer, he was a stringer for the Voice of America, um, America that is BOA, and he's presently doing, um, he's a president and expatriate in Nigeria, and will bring a lot of experience into what we are about to discuss. Um, reminder, ladies and gentlemen, our topic for discussion tonight is the Media in post war Sierra Leone. What are the challenges? Our panel of 
experts will examine what are the real challenges. Well, first of all, I must give you a definition of what the media is. It just, it's not just about newspapers and uh, the radio. It's also, uh, it can be defined as tools used to store and deliver information or data, uh, which means we can be talking about books, we can be talking about um, the radio, we can be talking about the newspaper, the archives, etc., etc., etc. But our panel of experts will try to break this into the simplest form. But I believe, they will be, uh, as the sensations are, they will try to concentrate basically on um, radio and the print media. We must not forget this fact. All, most of the time we talk about Sierra Leone being the first in so many things. As a South Africa, Sierra Leone. Uh, we talk about um, freedom for slaves, Sierra Leone. We talk about freedom. We talk about this and that. Well, here again is another thing. Um, the recognition of the media started way back to the start of the 19th century in Sierra Leone. In the 1860s, the country became a journalist hall. Can you believe that? For Africa with professionals traveling to the country from across the continent. Well, at the end of the 19th century, the country went into decline. What were the reasons? These are some of the things we need to examine. And it, the decline continues. Um, to start with, I will pose a question to Mr. Max Jimmy. Mr. Max Jimmy, can you, in well, two minutes as allocated to you, or three minutes if you can, explain what you really think are the challenges facing the media in Sierra Leone? Thank you very much, Mr. Saidi Casey, for bringing me on. Uh, I genuinely believe that the media in Sierra Leone has got a great role to play in post-war Sierra Leone if only the country is to stand back on its feet. Uh, to recount some of the challenges the media has faced in Sierra Leone, uh, among them paramount is peace, which the media has to make sure that peace is consolidated in Sierra Leone. Uh, after consolidating peace, then we will have to emphasize on good governance and promote democracy in the process. As well as that, justice has to be ensured in Sierra Leone. By that I mean there has to be things like corruption-free society, not only the promotion of rule of law, but the society has to be free of corruption. People must be able to live their life to enjoy the basic uh, you know, fundamental human rights that are all, you know, guaranteed to every one of us. Without this move, I don't see how the country uh, will develop economically. So in terms of peace, the media has got a big goal to make sure that when they are reporting on national issues, they make sure that public interest ranks paramount at all times. For now, I mean, it's been over a decade since I last left Sierra Leone. Nevertheless, I have been following uh, the main local media to a very large extent. And most of what I see, with the exception of very few people, is people actually playing a lot of partisan politics. Well, even in advanced democracies, it's not unusual for media houses to champion specific interests. It's common in every part of the world, as I've just said. However, the fact must never be lost on media practitioners that public interest is what we all need to preserve and promote. Um, when I look at what is currently going on in Sierra Leone, I see a lot of reckless practice being promoted by some of our colleagues. They think uh, by taking sides, they are serving the national interest, and I think the opposite to that, actually. By taking sides, they are doing a, great disserv a big disservice to the nation. Neither practitioner should make sure that when they are reporting on issues of national interest, they do so uh, in a very unbiased way. I see, for instance, people in Sierra Leone reporting on issues, they are taking sides, 
and apart from taking 